Hello, and welcome to Silk by East West. I'm David Earle, and I'll be your host as we explore these fantastic instruments from the Far East. Now, Silk was meticulously sampled to create the most realistic sample library possible of instruments from the Far East, including China, India, and the Persian Empire. The library is 25 gigs of 24-bit 44 goodies, including brass, strings, and wind instruments. It's got many ways to be expressive with the instruments, from legato and live settings to dynamic crossfade, key switching, and performances. Silk's a wonderful sibling to the Raw Library, which is also by East West. And for every instrument that's within this library, you get performances by real human beings. Silk has the same attention to detail that we come to expect from East West, but with the addition of the SSL effects suite that's included in Play 5, it's truly malleable and can fit into just about any kind of production. So let's jump into it. Before we begin listening to the sounds, let's look at the browser really quick. There are three folders, one for China, one for India, and one for the Persian Empire. Under China, we can look and see in parentheses the type of instrument that we're going to be playing and the name of the instrument. As we go into that folder, you'll see folders like Elements, KS, DXF, Legato, and Live. KS is key switching, DXS is dynamic crossfade, legato, and live. So legato is going to be joining notes so you don't play two notes at the same time. It slides between one note and the next note to make it sound very realistic. And then live is usually, depending on the type of instrument it is, it usually will have, if you hit high velocity, you'll get some kind of extra articulation or extended technique that plays. So that's pretty cool. And when we get into the performances folder, this particular performance folder only has one, but as we go to other instruments and we look in the performance folders, such as under India, if I go to the Bansuri and check out the performances, you'll see that there's you know, six of them. And you'll note that they say mod, which means we're going to be using the mod wheel, and start, which means that we can change at what point in a phrase we're going to start, which is pretty neat. So let's actually listen to some of the sounds. I think that the sounds that they have in Silk are really original and playable and expressive. I want to show you just kind of how I like to use them. So let's start in China. I have the Dizzy Large, and that's a type of flute that has a membrane that vibrates inside of it. And it's really beautiful. And so here's a line that I played in using the Dizzy. Now this instrument, if I go to the player, you'll note that I'm actually using a different scale. If we go to the microtuning, these instruments work very well if you choose a scale that works for them. Now you can use a Western scale if you like, but I suggest checking out the microtuning because it really helps the instruments to speak within their own language. Now let's check out the performance. If we go down here to the performance patch, I'll just play some keys. You'll see on the white keys here. This, these are the different performances that are being played by a real live player playing phrases on the instrument. So that's instantaneous realism, really neat stuff. I really love how this instrument is represented, and it's one of my favorite of the Chinese instruments. The other is the Erhu, which we've heard before in the Ra Library, but this is a slightly different take on it, and I really like how it's, um, it expresses itself in a different way. So in that, I was using a legato patch, to help it sound more realistic and with velocity, I'm able to get some of that vibrato out of it. But what's neat is when we use a DXF or a dynamic crossfade patch, listen to the difference in how it expresses itself. I'm using the mod wheel to push a little bit of vibrato at the end of each phrase. So that's a lot of fun. The performances for the Airhu are really cool. If I go into the browser here, you'll see that there's a ton of them. So we have the key that it's in, and then we have fast, long, slow, 
different types of ways that the instrument is played. So you can see that in this library, in the Silk Library, East West paid a lot of attention to getting good performances and a really wide range of performances. So that's fast, and here are some slow phrases just to mix it up. Especially with string instruments, it's so important to get some performances in there and use them occasionally because of the realism that the real life player gives. Now, as far as original instruments that I really love that are in this library, the Shang, if you've ever seen the Shang, it looks the closest to what you would imagine an alien race playing. It's this amazing cornucopia of pipes that you play with your hands and you blow into it with your mouth. It's a neat organish kind of sound. Now, of course, they do have individual patches for this as well. But what I love about the performances is on some of the performances, you can hear how the person's breath is really altering. It's giving it like a tremolo effect. It's just beautiful. And we go down to the Yang Pin, a wonderful uh, string instrument. The ring outs on these instruments are just amazing. And especially on the plucked, the, uh, the sort of dulcimer instruments and some of the zither-like instruments, really beautiful stuff. So this is the performance patch. Now we get into India and we start with the Bansuri flute. Now there's other Bansuri flutes as avail available in the East West libraries as well. But again, I really love this take on it. I thought they did a really interesting job and a really great job in getting it to be very expressive and playable. So on those high notes, I'm pushing the, uh, on, on the legato, I'm pushing it a little bit to get it to kind of slide, which is nice. But the Bansuri performances, of course, they really give you those, all of those bends and all those beautiful little ornaments that make a Bansuri so special. Then we have the Daruba, which is a really neat string instrument. With a lot of these instruments, you get away with using a little bit of bend. If you use a little bit of pitch bend, you can get a lot of expression out of these instruments. And the way that they were recorded, there's a lot of a sort of rosiny feel to them that uh, allow them to be bent and not sound too, you know, digital. Now let's listen to the performance. And of course, this is going to be some phrases that are just really energetic and interesting. Beautiful stuff. And we have the Sarod. This is a um, sort of like a guitar, but it has a really interesting fingerboard on it that um, allows it to get these really metallic and interesting ringing sounds. Now, what I love about the Sarod is this it sort of highlights the recording, like how well recorded these instruments are. And I just love listening to it because you can, you can really feel the pluck out of the instrument and also the, every resonant piece of that instrument is being carried. It's really, really nice. Beautiful performance of the Sarod. Now let's get into Persia and check this out. I couldn't resist. I 
Okay, yeah, it's George Michael. But anyway. This is the 30-piece orchestra that's playing, and it's playing in unison. With an accent at the beginning of the note, which is great. And you can just... Beautiful and strong and huge. I uh, just love it. And then we have the Duduk, which is a beautiful Armenian instrument, a uh, reed instrument. The Duduk, I was originally introduced to by Peter Gabriel's album, uh, Passion, which was written for Passion of the Christ in the 80s. And it's just such a beautiful instrument. It's so expressive. Beautifully expressive and a lot of like, a lot of depth and emotion. The electric cello is kind of interesting because the electric cello, of course, is an electric cello. And we can play it in this style that's, you know, sort of more Eastern sounding. It reminds me of the electric violin that Shankar played along with, well, who else? Peter Gabriel. But, um, but sort of the beautiful lower tones and, and this, this, the electric cello, the way that it's recorded um, directly it just has this interesting sort of nasally quality to it that's it's hard to describe. And what's beautiful about the performances for the electric cello is that when we go into the browser, you can see there are a ton of them in different styles. We have Asian, ethnic. We have um, some that are timed. So we have 140 BPM, 130 BPM. Really neat uh, collection of performances for that instrument. This instrument is really super interesting too. Now this is the whole library that I'm showing you. These are just the ones that I think are really special. And the Kamenchi is this um, instrument that's played. It's three strings and you, you have no frets or anything. You're using your fingernails as frets. So you hold the fingernails against the fingerboard and you press them against the uh, strings and you can run your fingernail up and down and get this a really neat sound, all of the bends and slides and everything that you can get from not having it tied to frets. So when you hear that vibrato, that's actually coming from a person shaking their fingernail on the string. Really amazing. So the performances, of course, are really important for this instrument. To get all of those slides and, and all of those cool little ornaments, you have to have the performances. Now for the Canaan. So you'll note over here I'm using the Arabic common scale, and I think that it just adds an extra layer of depth and an interesting culture to the instrument when we play it. So this instrument is like a zither, uh, but you play it with these uh, metal pieces on your fingers and you play it with your fingers and it's like a cross between a, a zither and a dulcimer, but you're plucking it. You're not hitting it with hammers, you're plucking it with your fingers and really neat. So the Canaan performances are really great too, of course. With all of these instruments, there's a deftness to the playing that needs to be captured in the performances. Then we have the tar. Last but not least, on my list of <laughs> my favorite instruments in this collection, the tar is this um, beautiful long-necked string instrument that's played much like a guitar. And I love that on this, if you hit it with a hard velocity, you get double hits, which is very, very handy when you're playing. And then here are some performances. Beautiful Persian instrument. Okay, so I would like to just recap this. Beautiful instruments from China and India and the Persian Empire, basically. Really beautifully well done, 
performances on every instrument that you should check out. And then you should also check out these microtuning tables over here on the right hand side. In the player, like we've had before in other players, we have ADT, which is our automatic double tracking, which is simulating tape doubling. Then we have a standard digital delay. We have our stereo doubling. We have a amplitude envelope. On the left hand side, we have reverb and a filter. And then we have our articulations on the right. This is going to be the samples that are being loaded for this specific instrument. On the left, we have our MIDI settings. And if you go into the mixer, all of the sounds that you've heard that I was playing, I was only using the SSL effects suite to get those tones out of them. The SSL effects suite is wonderful. It's like having an SSL console channel strip for every instrument that you have, including a bus compressor for every instrument that you use in your session. So it's pretty amazing. Silk is a pristinely recorded library. Every instrument that was recorded, there was a lot of care that was taken to make sure that they were really capturing the essence of the instrument. Well, sometimes you want to make things a little dark or really mess things up. And in the mixer, in play, now there are two additional effects plugins in the mixer that we get where we can do some really interesting stuff. We've got Amp Simulator and Omicide. Now, Amp Simulator is what it sounds like. Essentially, we're getting a guitar amp out of this, but not just one guitar amp, several. As you see, on the left, we get the guitar amp type, or in this case, bass amp type. And then on the right, it's what microphone was used in recording it. So just throwing something like an e-cello through one of these can add an interesting layer to your recording. So here they are without it. This is just going through the amp simulator. So you can get some interesting stuff. I'll pull the bass down. So you can put the amp simulator before or after your SSL channel strip. Now below amp simulator is Omicide. Omicide is ridiculous. Essentially what you're getting is a multi-band dynamics and distortion plugin. So there are four independent spatial ranges for this plugin. So you get different distortion in different parts of the frequency range. And on each one of these bands, which you can choose where the crossover is using these three knobs, on each of these bands, you get this control strip. So it starts with the noise gate, where you get threshold, attack, release, and amount. And then you get to shape the sound. You can kind of alter the body of the sound, adjust how much gain you're getting out of the distortion. The distortion type comes down below in three different categories. So if I click here, you can see the three categories pop right up. You can also choose them with these arrows, or you can click and hold on this little button here. Bias, feedback, frequency, and spread. Then we have what looks like a pan knob down below, but instead of just a balance knob, which would do left and right balance of the sound, we also get something called mid-side. And what that does is it takes any audio that's correlated between the speakers. Uh, that's going to be your stuff that's right up the center. That's going to be the stuff that's exactly the same between the speakers. You can turn that up and down. So you can take the middle channel of whatever you have and turn that up and down and balance it with what's happening on the sides. So that's the data that's different between the speakers that we perceive as being stereo. So you can actually balance that out and do really interesting stuff with your image, which I find amazing to pop that in on a plugin like this. We've also got solo, mute, and mix. And then we have, so the mix is gonna be the dry to wet sound. And then we have a little volume fader. Up above, we have a little display that shows us a readout of where things are happening and what things look like when we're uh, processing them. So if I get down here to this little lick on the electric cello, so that sounds pretty cool and weird, but if I take the bypass off on Omicide, that sounds really outlandish. So you can have a lot of fun messing around with timbre using this plugin. Let's come down to this instrument, the Kanan. Bypass, turn that off so we can hear it with Omicide.
So it kind of reminds me in a movie if you're, you know, hearing the call to worship off on a bad speaker and a bad microphone somewhere off in a church off in the distance. You can do some really interesting stuff with this sound design wise. And then last but not least, here's the tempora, which is usually the drone that happens behind a sitar or any other Indian instrument, Indian classical instrument. And unbypassed, we have something that sounds like... But pop it through on the side, it gets a little bit more hard rock. So having this as part of our palette is pretty amazing. It allows a lot of flexibility in the sound, and having this added to the palette just gives so many possibilities. It's a favorite of people like Skrillex and Armin Van Buren and Trent Reznor, who are known for their dark and edgy sounds. And if, if you want to get instant edge and sort of timbral interestingness, I highly recommend checking out this plugin. You can add in as much as you want or as little as you want using these mix knobs at the bottom or this uh, wet dry mix at the end. But I would suggest really playing around with it because it's included in all Play 5 libraries. And if you're not messing with this, you're missing out. Anyway, that's about it. I hope that you enjoyed this series on Silk. I love this library and I hope that you get to explore it all and go look up the instruments on YouTube as well as you're using them to get an understanding of how they're played and get a deeper understanding of how they can be integrated into your music. Now I'd like to show you an example of how it's used in a composition and we'll use this demo to play you out. Take good care and I'll see you next time. Ciao.